Yo, 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 welcome to Hard Pass. I am your host, Jacques Slade. Today on the show, we've got Vomero Fever, John Morant, and a pickle of a conundrum of an enigma, and this week's hottest releases. Of course, we've got a hard pass. All right, let's start with some hot takes. Congratulations to my main man, Paul Gasol, copyright Ahmad Rashad, on finally getting his jersey retired with my 17-time world champion, Los Angeles Lakers. Alongside the late Kobe Bryant, Paul got us two more rings to add to the collection. And not only that, one of those rings came at the expense of the Boston Celtics. So, salute, Paul. We know Mamba and Gigi are looking down and they're beaming with pride. Oh. And if Anthony Davis is wondering, two is the minimum. LeBron will get number 23 or six, but not both up there if he retires tomorrow because he's LeBron. Not saying I agree with it or not, but we all know the deal when the politics involves when it comes to King James. AD? Yeah. Two championships is a maybe. Three is a safe bet and four is a lock. Look, guys like Byron Scott and Big Shot Bob Ory might not be among the 75 greatest of all time, but you know what they got? at least three rings with my Lakers. And if they can't get in with those numbers, AD needs to pad his resume some more. That's the standard, man. I don't make the rules. Unless you're LeBron or Gail Goodrich or Logo or Elgin Baylor or or, or Powell really either. I, I really should have stopped that bit through before I started talking. Anyways, AD, you can start by getting us closer to a playoff spot while LeBron is healing up at Sierra Canyon watching Bronny and Bryce. Let's start there. Uh, Kevin Durant's been in Phoenix for like five minutes and he's out again with an ankle injury he suffered while warming up. At this point, we're just bummed that we won't get to see the Suns at full strength for a while. That being said, you know we're in a different world now when nobody is talking about KD's signature shoes when it comes to his various injuries. Like, he missed almost an entire season in OKC while dealing with a broken foot. He was also out for his first year in Brooklyn after tearing his Achilles in the finals against Toronto. Could you imagine if KD wore Adidas? It would be madness in these Twitter streets. You know, back when we liked Twitter in like 2012. Uh, Tiffany's just revealed the best and most obnoxious part of the entire Air Force One collaboration, a 23 pound shoe box made of sterling silver. Damn, PJ Tucker gonna get a workout just carrying that box around and all those tunnel walks. Can't wait for the inevitable DJ Khaled stunt with this box. Can he even get it past security into the arena? It's 23 pounds. It's not a box, it's a weapon. That was my DJ Khaled, sorry, I won't do that again. Uh, John Bashimi and Foot Joy have teamed up to release special editions of Field and Wilcox from the brand's premiere series. Hmm, Field and Wilcox sounds like a law firm with a catchy jingle you used to hear when the radio was still a thing. R.I.P. Barnes, by the way. Anyways, and, and now you see why we need Jordans to really hit it big in golf. If this was a Nike SB or a New Balance collab, you know it would be getting roasted right now with everyone wondering, wait, where's the collab part? Speaking of collabs, we here at Hard Pass would like to call a spade a spade. When Supreme does some stupid shit that reeks of laziness, we get on them. When they put in the minimum effort, we give them credit. And when they got off their asses and gave us something like this upcoming Nike SB collab that's an homage to the late artist Remo Lazy, we applaud them, even if it could be better. Looks like all those rumors about Adidas and what's his face weren't true after all. Shocking, I know, but Adidas still doesn't know what to do with the surplus Yeezys. My solution, sell them at cost, just break even so you can just be done with it. The people who want them will get them. The stands who claim they won't buy them will still buy them and the world will move on because you won't be seen as opportunistic and profiting off of the guy anymore. So win win. The Nike and Cool Kai saga continues with Nike calling Kai a serial copyist and his counterclaim is basically a distraction from his alleged infringement. I, I have to say alleged because it's still alleged in a legal sense, but in the I have eyes and can see department, uh, that's a little less murky. Meanwhile, Cool Kai claims Nike is selling his ideas and color, isn't this the part when the Curb Your Enthusiasm theme is supposed to come on? Wait, let's try it again. Okay, Preezy play the music. Uh, meanwhile, Cool Kai claims Nike is stealing his ideas and colorways and he's a serial sold out tour date in a serial line in every city and that we should download the Kai Studios app. I don't know. All right, now here's a segment that we didn't think we would ever have to do on this show. John ja Morant is in hot water. When we started putting this segment together earlier this week, the line was a bit of hot water. 
The Memphis Grizzlies superstar was granted a provisional break of two games by the team, with an additional four games being announced as of this recording. It's looking like a return this season seems unlikely after a number of questionable incidents, namely flashing a gun while inside a strip club during an Instagram Live. This is the continuation of an odd pattern of behavior that the public was first made aware of last year when Ja was alleged to have come out of his house with a gun after getting into an altercation with a 17-year-old boy after a pickup game. There was also a confrontation with a mall security guard last summer and members of the Indiana Pacers organization claiming that they were being pointed at by laser sights by people in Ja's camp. None of these has resulted in arrest, however, just police reports at most. Since the leave of absence, Ja has released an official statement apologizing to family, friends, fans, and the Grizzlies organization, and that he will take the time away to work on himself. That is not the type of statement you make when you're planning on returning to the court this season. This feels like a break where we don't see Ja until next season. While this might suck for Grizzlies fans, and it does, and the league who is also banking on Ja to be one of their future superstars, however, if this is what Morant needs to get right, that's way more important than the game of basketball. Honestly, a break like this seems like something we should all be able to do every once in a while, you know? Take time during heightened moments of stress to better ourselves. Only difference between, say, myself and most of the people watching this compared to Ja, you know, besides the flashing of a gun at a strip club and live streaming part, which was dumb, full stop, we're also not the lead player on an NBA team near the top of the standings. Oh, and we also don't have a debut signature shoe set to sell in a few weeks. For their part, Nike has also released a statement and it says, we appreciate Jaws accountability and that he has taken the time to get the help he needs. We support his prioritization of his well-being. One thing I'm glad that happened during this whole thing is that most people are concerned with Ja getting the help he needs and not turning it into something that it isn't. Naturally, human gas bag Skip Bayless and fellow talking head jerk offs are going to assume the worst but their opinions should never be taken seriously. That being said, this is the part where I throw my two cents into the whole whataboutism that's going on from bad faith actors who conveniently ignore one glaring fact when they compare Nike's treatment of Ja to that of Kyrie Irving. Say it with me, y'all. Kyrie was leaving Nike at the end of the season anyway. That's not an opinion, that's fact. Kyrie was unhappy with Nike, and Nike didn't think Kyrie was worth the trouble anymore. Kyrie's troubling social media posts and subsequent reaction to it pushed the separation up a few months. If this had happened in between the launch of, say, the Kyrie 2 and 3, and Kai was a little more contrite with his apology, Nike would have released a statement that said, we appreciate Kyrie's accountability and that he is taking the time to get the help he needs. We support his prioritization of his well-being. If Ja had apologized and then was recorded at another club with a gun in hand, the Ja one never sees the light of day and Nike would be right to do so. Nuance, people, nuance. Come on now. So what does Ja Morant's troubles mean for the Nike Ja one? Assuming there are no other reports that will come to light that are even worse than what we've heard already, probably not a whole hell of a lot, honestly. The Jaw One is going to sell to Jaw fans, young hoopers, and parents of young hoopers looking for a budget signature shoe. The design wasn't lighting the hype beast world on fire even before all this news, so don't expect to see them popping up in the mainstream. Sure, some fans might be turned off by Jaw's behavior, and that's to be expected. But anybody who thinks that Jaws line is over even before it starts, that's a little premature. Jaws issues right now are not going to help or hurt the Nike Jaw one. If LeBron James becoming the NBA all-time leading scorer can't sell LeBron 20s or Dame Lillard scoring 71 points can't bump up the Dame 8's numbers, the Jaw one will be fine with or without Jaw playing in them right now. That's the goodwill he bought for being a charismatic superstar in the short time he's been in the league. But as Kyrie and other stars who have seen their signature lines cut short have learned, that goodwill won't last forever. Ja has time on his side for now. And that's time he needs to focus on more important things and to tell someone in the Memphis front office to trade Dylan Brooks this summer. Seriously, when did he become the new Pat Bev? As Jalen Rose said in his wonderful monologue about Ja from the moment he became a lottery pick, he became the leader of his family and his crew. Here's hoping he's able to accept responsibility for his actions and that the community is able to give him some grace as he figures things out. 
It's time for the Heat Check, where we bring you everything that's dropping this week. First up, we have the Rays by Wolves, Sockety Grid, Azura 2000 Pack Leader on the 13th, the Nike Dunk High Faded Spruce on the 14th for 135, the Air Jordan 2 Melon Tent on the 15th for 150, the Women's Air Max 187 Great Indoors on the 15th for 150, the Adidas Trey Young 2 Lightning on the 15th for 140, the Adidas Don Issue 4 McDonald's All American on the 15th for 120, the Adidas Harden Volume 7 Crew Yellow on the 15th for 160, the Volume 7 Cloud White on the 15th for 160. The uh, Nike SB Air Jordan 4 on the 17th. That's going to be at skate shops only. The Air Jordan 1 Skyline on the 18th for 180. And then the Adidas Don issue number 4 Easter on the 18th for $120. And then for our picks of the week, we have the Nike Terminator High and Black and Phantom on the 16th for 135. The Nike Air Penny 1 Tiger Stripes on the 16th for 190. The Nike Zoom LeBron NXTTT number 20 Gen Wolf Gray. That's on the 16th for 160. And then the Reebok Question mid orange toe on the 16th why because it's on 316 aka stone cold steve austin day and big apologies to the sp jordans all right and now for a heat check on the nike zoom vomero 5 um i don't know if you know this but the vomeros are having a moment in the culture right now Sneakerheads are scooping up pairs whenever a new colorway drops and the best part is that you can still pick them up with no problem you might want to act soon though, because it's slowly catching on with more casual fans, AKA the Panda Dunk crowd. Hey, I'll admit to never even mentioning the Vimeros on the show until last week's episode. And that was because of Nike's amazing Panda Vimero troll. Between those, the Dornbecker Vimero by Jaron Heacock and the organic way this sneaker has risen in popularity. It's a trend that we can all get behind. Not bad for a runner that is part of a series of runners that's about to hit its 17th iteration. I mean, Look, full transparency here. I honestly couldn't tell you the difference between a Vimero 11 from a Vimero 8 from a Vimero 6 to a Vimero 14. What I do think is going on is that the Vimero 5 is the most new balance sneaker that Nike is currently offering and that it's a smart play by them to grow that sneaker's profile as a sort of countermeasure against the headways the Ultimate Dad sneaker brand has made in the past few years. Like, yeah. Nike's classic Air Max shoes are their clapbacks to the 990s of the world, but if you really, really want that New Balance look, but also really, really need that swoosh, the Vimero 5 is that compromise you're looking for. And it even comes in a pander colorway that pisses off people on the internet. I mean, what more could you ask for in a sneaker? It's time for this week's Hard Pass, where we take a look at something in the culture that just needs to go. We actually got two Hard Passes this week, courtesy of our friends at Nintendo and Nike. Let's start with the video game company that thought making Star-Lloyd the voice of Mario was a good idea. Spoiler, it's not. At the very best, it's uninspired. Okay, so there are reports in the video game world that Nintendo's successor to the very popular but also very old and underpowered Switch could spell doom for people who have amassed a ton of games on the platform. The Switch 2 or Switch Pro or Switch U, what, whatever the Switch name they're gonna come up with that is absolutely not going to confuse anybody will obviously have newer, faster, more powerful specs to run this new generation's games. The problem is that whatever chipset Nintendo uses for the next Switch might not come with the hardware that powered the original Switch, thus leaving it all up to the nebulous imperfect world of emulation. What that means is that some, if not all of those games you bought on the Switch might not work on the next console. Maybe that's not a big deal for some gamers, some of whom who haven't opened up their Switch since Animal Crossing. But if you're the type of fan who has every first party release and dozens of random retro game collections, it would kind of suck if it didn't cross over. Look, backwards compatibility has been a staple of Nintendo consoles and portables since the early 2000s when the Game Boy Advance played all the Game Boy games. Now, the Switch wasn't backwards compatible with the Wii U, but not a lot of people hated that because not a lot of people bought a Wii U. But a lot of people bought the Switch, and if it means Nintendo has to shoehorn that old Tegra X1 chipset into the new Switch, they're gonna have to eat the costs. I mean, let's be honest here, Nintendo's just gonna pass that cost on to us and we're gonna pay it. You know, because we're suckers, basically. Now, one thing that should not be for suckers is piss poor quality control. And that seems to be the case with the Air Jordan 3 Reimagined. While the larger release of the 3s went down this weekend, people who have started to get their pairs through shop drops and other means are not all the way happy. Shout out to Nice Kicks for this recap. Like, 
the majority are going to enjoy these sneakers and perpetuate the idea that we want retros to look like beaters out of the box. But a significant number of posts on social media are showing what they got and it ain't pretty. There are discrepancies on the elephant print with some practically fading away, while others aren't even consistent from one shoe to the next. Heel tabs are coming in crooked, stitching doesn't align, scuff marks everywhere. It's honestly a mess. There are even some pairs coming with different finishes of leather. It's like Nike took the reimagined gimmick and twisted it in the most bizarre way possible. Now, now, you might think this will be a wake up call for sneakerheads to rise up and demand better from Nike. And you'd be right. There are tons of complaints and demands on Nike to be better. But at the same time, those SV4s and Skyline 1s, those are dropping next week. Most people that are mad aren't going to be mad enough to miss out on those. And that's part of the problem. All right. That's going to do it for the show. Thank you for watching Hard Pass. I am Jacques Slade. I'll see you next week, but not before we leave you with a viewer Hard Pass. Hey, Jacques, this is A. Wilkes, and I just want to use your platform to talk to my kids for a second. Little ones, I know right now it feels like your daddy is stunning on you with the shoes, but that's not my intention, okay? It just doesn't make sense for me to spend $200 on a pair of shoes that you're only going to stay in for about three months, all right? When you get a little older, your daddy got you. But for right now, let this mold you and build you like it did me in my childhood. Your daddy loves you. Hey, Jock, that is A-Y-E underscore W-I-L-K-S. Thank you. I appreciate it, and I enjoy the show. If you'd like to possibly be featured in a future episode, call us at 818-493-9325. Leave a short message, your socials if you want, no more than 30 seconds. All right, I'll see you next week. Peace.